Hello and welcome to the biology topic genetics and evolution lesson two variation. So in lesson one we had a look at um, inheritance and how we inherit the different characteristics. In lesson two we're going to look at um, the variation between organisms, so the differences, so why are they different and how are they different, okay? So look at, we're going to look at obvious differences and similarities, okay? So if, if, say for example, if we pick the kitten and the spider, there are lots of obvious differences. You can talk about number of legs, you can talk about fur, you can talk about shape, OK, they are two very different species. OK, so they are very different. All right. The same as if we compare the fish, the goldfish with the elephant. So the variation between species is quite big, but the variation within a species won't be as big and there'll be more similarities. OK, so, for example, if you took the kitten and you compared it with another breed of kitten, you would see similarities between the two. Some other examples, okay? You've got two different species of dogs here, and you've also got two different species of elephants here, okay? One African, one Indian, and I think here, dog-wise, you've got a golden retriever and a beagle. So you can see, we'll talk about the dogs, you can see that there are similarities. You can see the shape of the face, you can see the nose, um, but fur length is different. The shape of face is similar, but yet different. They have four legs. You can't see from both pictures, but both um, of these breeds of dog have um, tails. OK, so there are similarities and the similarities between the, the elephant. OK, the two different breeds of elephant. You can see here um, size of ears is always a big one with the elephants. They differ massively. OK, now why are they different? The reason that they're different is all to do um, with their genes. So if they're from a different species, they have very obvious differences. And that's the variation. OK, the genes between those two species, like this dog and the cat, are very different. Within the same species, there are much more, much more obvious similarities between the characteristics, OK? In humans, there are similarities that show variations, but that aren't as obvious. So eye colour and blood group being an example. You And blood group is a good one because you can't see someone's blood group by looking at it, yet um, People within the same family will, can have different eye colour, different hair colour and different blood group. OK, but they are all humans and within the same family. So closely related. So we'll have inherited some of the same genetic information. Now, all this can be looked at through different types of variation. OK, there are two types of variation that we need you to know about. OK, so firstly, talking about continuous variation. So we're looking here. First picture is talking about height. The second one being weight. Now we're on to blood groups. That's not continuous variation. That's discontinuous variation. Blood group. Um, also petal colour in flowers. OK, and intelligence. That's what that, that picture of that frame represents. So. These these fall into two different types of variation, as I've just mentioned, one being continuous, one being discontinuous. So continuous variation covers a range. OK, so there's a range of values for this characteristic. It doesn't fall into set values. Here are some examples, so height, weight, um, leaf span, so that we've got a plant example there for you, um, intelligence and also skin colour. OK, then discontinuous variation. OK, we're falling into clear categories. So we've got blood group, we've got petal colour, uh, hair colour. We'll also have um, eye colour as well. So there are certain values for this characteristic. Um, so colour of roses is a good example and um, colour of tulips as well. 
Um, and as I've just mentioned, eye colour and hair colour are all examples of discontinuous variation. Now, you need to be able to categorise the different variations you're given into whether they're continuous or discontinuous. You need to know the difference between the two and you need to understand what causes organisms to be different. OK, so if you're not quite sure, rewatch the video again. But if you think you're OK on it, you need to go on and complete the worksheet and then we will see you again for the next lesson very soon.